The story begins in a dungeon, where our protagonist Ryota suddenly wakes up, scaring off a girl that was examining him. She wonders if he is really a human, wondering why a slime would drop a human, since they usually only drop bean sprouts, and the boy is confused by what she's talking about. The girl introduces herself as Emily, and she decides to show him what she means, fighting another slime that hits her for half her HP, but she crushes it with her giant hammer. As the slime disappears, it drops a bunch of bean sprouts, and Ryota is confused at the sight. Emily explains they are on the first floor of a dungeon called Tellulu, and that the slimes on this level always drop bean sprouts. In fact, everything in this world is a drop from a monster. They continue through the maze, and Ryota wonders if he is still on Earth. Emily kills another slime, and Ryota wonders why she doesn't kill other monsters. Emily tells him that there are only slimes on the first level, and that she is too weak to go to level 2. She takes him to a status board, which she explains can show his stats. We see she is only level 3, and her stats seem to be pretty mediocre. Ryota thinks it's like a video game, and he notices there's a second page. Emily explains it shows her drop status, which determines the amount of drops she can get from certain item types. We see all her drop stats are at F rank, but her drops for plants is higher at E rank, which is why she is farming bean sprouts. Ryota decides to check his stats, but he becomes disappointed when he sees all his stats at F, and his level is stuck at level 1. He checks his second page, and we see all his drop stats are at S. Emily thinks his stats are terrible, since S comes after so many other letters in the alphabet, but Ryota thinks S is usually the highest in games, so he decides to try it out. He looks for a weapon, and Emily offers him her hammer. But it's way too heavy for him, so Emily gives him a bamboo spear instead. A slime approaches them, and Ryota struggles against it, but he eventually manages to take it out. The slime drops a huge amount of bean sprouts, and Emily can't believe it, having never seen such a big drop, allowing Ryota to confirm his suspicions. Ryota's stomach suddenly rumbles, and Emily decides to make him some food. Emily cooks some of the bean sprouts they collected. Ryota finds her food to be delicious and he devours it eagerly. She hands him a cup of soup to try, but she's startled when he starts to tear up. She thinks that might have been the soup, but Ryota assures her that it was good and that he was simply recalling his past life. He remembers how he used to work tirelessly, only eating cold convenience store food, until eventually, he exhausted himself so much, and the last thing he remembered was waking up there. Emily hugs him, comforting him by saying that all his efforts will eventually pay off. Ryota thanks her, and thinks he should find a place to stay, so Emily tells him about the town where he can find lodging. Ryota learns that Emily sleeps in the dungeon, because she couldn't afford a place of her own, but she lets him keep the bamboo spear as he leaves. Ryota makes it to the town, and he learns more about the world, learning that their currency is called Pelos, and he manages to sell his bean sprouts for 200 Pelos. He learns that an average meal costs around 500 Pelos, and the lodging would cost 2,000 for a night. He starts killing slimes in the dungeon, trading all his bean sprouts for money, and after three days, he brings Emily to a house he rented. The house is a bit run down, but Ryota hands Emily the keys, saying it's for her to live in. We learn it costs 20,000 pilos a month, and Emily starts to panic, but Ryota assures her, saying he will cover all of the rent. Emily can't accept such a gesture, but Ryota says it's to thank her for the soup she made him. Emily notices the blisters on his hand, and the bags under his eyes, and she ends up asking him to live with her, wanting to continue making him food. Ryota goes to trade his bean sprouts at the Swallow's Gratitude, and the girl at the counter, Urza, is amazed by the large amount that he brings. Ryota tells her that he plans on going to level 2 to get better drops, and she tells him that monsters on level 2 drop carrots. She mentions a new dungeon called Nihonium popped up, and that the Neptune group, the most powerful group in Sekro, is investigating it. As Ryota leaves, Urza tries to ask him out, but he ends up rejecting her. Ryota returns home, and is amazed to find it spotless. Emily brings him a warm towel and a cup of tea. He urges her to take a break, but she tells him that she enjoys the work. He mentions Nihonium to her, but Emily says that she heard it was useless, because it has no drops. Ryota decides to check out the dungeon for himself. He walks through the cavern-like area, and a skeleton appears. It attacks him but misses, hitting a column beside him and crushing it. Ryota attacks, but his spear gets lodged in the skeleton's ribs. 
Luckily, a column behind the skeleton collapses on top of it, and Riona stabs it repeatedly while it's pinned. The skeleton drops a glowing seed, and as Ryota collects it, he hears a voice that tells him his max HP has increased. Ryota and Emily check the status board, and are shocked to see his HP has leveled up to C rank. Emily is excited by this, and Ryota sets off to kill more skeletons. He brings Emily along, and they find out that Emily's kills don't drop any seeds. She also can't pick up seeds from Ryota's kills, so Ryota concludes that Nihonium must be a stat-increasing dungeon that's only for S ranks. Back home, during a meal, Ryota tells Emily about his plan to go to level 2 of Tellulu. Emily gets worried, and tells him not to be reckless, so he promises he will return by nightfall. In the dungeon, Ryota fights a slime on level 2. The slime hits him, but he barely takes any damage, thanks to his new S-ranked HP stat. He eventually kills the slime, and it drops a huge carrot. Another slime approaches him, but before it can attack him, it's killed by a fireball. It also drops a carrot, but it's smaller than Ryota's. Three men emerge from around the corner to collect the carrot. The three mock him, and they scan him with a device, seeing he's only level 1, so they laugh and leave. Ryota is left irritated, when suddenly, a girl appears behind him. She has a peculiar outfit, and we see she has bunny ears. She asks Ryota if he's actually level 1, smacking him in the head, and saying how she hates low levels. Ryota receives no damage, and the girl is shocked by this, so she just walks away confused. Back at home, Emily is amazed by the size of the carrots. Ryota tells her he got 8,000 pilos for them at the Swallow's Gratitude, and he thinks he's going to be rich. There's a knock at the door, and Ryota finds the girl from before. She smacks him in the head again, repeating that she hates low levels. Seeing no reaction from him, she starts acting strange, and she confesses her love for him. Emily asks Ryota who the girl is. The girl smacks Ryota's head, but he doesn't flinch. She drags a bystander to their door, and does the same to him, immediately knocking him out. She asks why it didn't happen to Ryota, and he thinks it's probably because of his S rank HP. He asks her why she came, and she pulls out a large carrot from her dress. Ryota recalls dropping a carrot when they left the dungeon, and the girl took the carrot as soon as it fell. She tells Ryota she wants more, and gets excited when she sees all the carrots in the house. Emily asks her if she wants to eat with them, and she demonstrates how to make carrot noodles with carrot sauce and soup. The girl drools at the sight of the delicious food, and the three of them sit down to eat. The girl praises Emily's cooking skill as they finish the food, and the girl leaves immediately after. Ryota cautiously walks through the second level of Nihonium, determined to get stronger, when suddenly, a zombie appears, and Ryota valiantly attacks it, but ends up breaking his bamboo spear. Ryota uses his punches and kicks to defeat the zombie, and he collects the seed it dropped. The strange voice tells him that his strength has increased by one. At that moment, Ryota is disturbed by another voice. He looks up to see that the girl has been watching him all that time. She jumps down, smacking him on the head, and asking him about the drop. Ryota doesn't want her to know that his drop rank is S, so he decides not to tell her. She asks if he has any carrots, and he tells her he doesn't. She wants to go to Tellulu for more carrots, so Ryota tells her to wait at the Swallow's Gratitude, and she leaves. Ryota arrives at the Swallow's Gratitude with a ton of carrots in his hand. He walks to the girl, as a crowd gathers around them. He hands her a carrot, and the crowd gasps with shock, as the girl ecstatically munches on the carrot. Urza approaches Ryota, and quickly offers to buy all his carrots for double the retail value. She explains that the girl's name is Eve Callus Leader, and she's a notorious adventurer. Her signature karate chop is called Excalibur, capable of cutting a boulder in half. She is also a carrot expert, so any carrot she approves of is sure to fetch a high price. Urza offers 15,000 pilos for each carrot. Ryota is astonished and tries to thank Eve, but she simply asks for more carrots. He says he doesn't have any, so she tries to smack him again, but he stops her hand. She asks for carrots again, and Ryota promises to get her more tomorrow. This makes her upset, as she finally leaves. At Tellulu level 2, Ryota and Emily check their hall. Ryota decides to have another look around the dungeon. He hears something around the corner, where he finds two adventurers struggling to kill a slime. They become exhausted, as their captain walks over. They quickly secure the slime to the ground, as the old man finishes it off, collecting the carrot, and telling them to move on. 
His companions want to rest, but the old man scolds them for being weak and tells them he's being strict because he wants them to get stronger. They go with their captain, as Ryota recalls how he used to have a boss in his past life who would overwork him and tell him that it was for his benefit. Emily comes up to Ryota with a lunchbox, and they decide to take a break. They lay out their lunch, when suddenly, Eve runs up to them, excited to eat Emily's food. They blissfully eat lunch, as Ryota hears someone talking. He sees the group from earlier, and the captain looks at them disparagingly, telling his companions never to be as lazy as them. He says that the quality of the drop depends on the effort put into obtaining it, but Eve leaps over to them, telling them to eat the carrots. She slices it in half and stuffs it in their mouths. They start munching on it as Eve tells the captain that the carrots are delicious even without hard work. The captain becomes irritated, preparing to attack, but Eve stops him and the old man leaves with his companions. At the swallow's gratitude, Ryota tells Urza that they couldn't bring all of their items and Urza suggests getting a magical cart to help him carry the items. They arrive at a shop where they are greeted by a little girl at the counter. She calls for her dad, and an old man pops out from the back. He recommends a magical cart with a monster detection system, and they are interested in buying it, but they are surprised to learn that it costs 10 million pilos. The other carts in the shop also cost millions of pilos, so they become dejected, and they walk away without buying a cart. They suddenly hear a commotion, as people yell that there is a stray. Emily explains that a stray is a monster that appears when drops are left where there aren't many people. Ryota looks up to see a giant gorilla rampaging through town and several people running away, including adventurers. Emily tells him that strays don't have any drops, so adventurers don't fight them. Ryota hears a scream and he sees Urza on the ground as the gorilla throws a punch at her. Ryota jumps in, stopping its fist, and Eve arrives with a band of adventurers to join the fight. Ryota tells Urza that he will deal with the stray and he charges at the gorilla. It is about to hurl a boulder at him but Emily smashes it with her hammer. The adventurers attack the gorilla's limbs, as Ryota springs forward, headbutting the gorilla before landing the finishing blow. The bystanders applaud Ryota for saving the town, and Ryota is glad to receive appreciation for the first time. He hears the chime from a drop, and they go to investigate it. They discover that it had dropped a pistol, and Ryota is surprised to find a weapon that shouldn't even exist in that world. Outside Nihonium, Ryota checks his status, and sees that his strength has leveled up to C rank thanks to the C drops. He enters Nihonium equipped with the pistol, and he shoots at an incoming zombie. The first shot blows off its shoulder, and the second shot kills it. Ryota confirms that the gun works, as multiple zombies walk toward him. He shoots at them, killing them with ease, but he wonders how he will obtain more bullets, so he thinks about using them sparingly. At Tellulu, a slime jumps at Emily, but Ryota shoots and kills at midair. She is happy to see him, and they have lunch together. She admires his new weapon, and he tells her he plans on checking out the next level. They realize that Eve didn't show up for lunch, and assume she must be busy. They enter the third level, and Emily knows that the monsters in the area are called Cocker Slimes, and that they drop pumpkins. They set out to find the Cocker Slimes, and Ryota spots some scurrying on the walls. He notices that they are similar to cockroaches, and is disgusted by them. He hears a heavy slam, as Emily strikes the floor with her hammer. She displays a creepy smile, saying she wants to kill all the cocker slimes. Emily brutally kills one, and they collect a pumpkin from the drop. Ryota suggests going back up for more carrots, not wanting to see Emily's scary side again. But along the way, they encounter another swarm of cocker slimes. They repulse Emily, and she goes crazy at the sight of them. Ryota tells her that he'll take care of it, and he starts shooting at the monsters, begging Emily not to lose her mind. Ryota defeats the monsters, and the pair tries to figure out how to carry all the massive pumpkins from Ryota's drops. When Emily suddenly starts acting weird again, wanting to kill more cocker slimes. A sudden burst at the entrance sends Ryota flying along with the pumpkins. Eve emerges to receive her carrots for the day, and Emily offers up the backpack full of carrots, as Ryota feels relieved. They trade in their pumpkins at the Swallow's Gratitude, and return to retrieve the rest of their hull, only to find them half-eaten on the ground. Ryota guesses that a small animal got to them, but Emily suspects that the Cocker Slimes are responsible. She smashes one of the ruined pumpkins, and a swarm of Cocker Slimes emerge from inside it, so Emily starts to go berserk. Terrified of what Emily might become, Ryota quickly pulls out his gun, 
and shoots at them until he runs out of bullets. He cries for Emily to be patient and promises to kill all of them as he smashes them with his hands. Eventually, Ryota kills all the cocker slimes. Emily apologizes to Ryota for her frenzy when suddenly, Ryota hears multiple chimes and they realize that the monsters dropped more bullets. At the Swallow's gratitude, Urza explains that strays appear if a drop is left unattended outside a dungeon. Ryota thinks it might be possible to force strays to spawn and kill them for more bullets. He's lost in thought as Urza attempts to ask him out, but he just thanks her and hurries away. Ryota experiments by leaving a carrot outside and waits for a monster to spawn, but Eve appears to eat the carrot. Ryota tries again and a slime appears, so Ryota instantly kills it. It drops more bullets and Ryota is pleased that his experiment worked. He wonders what would happen if he tried the same thing with the seeds from Nihonium. At Nihonium, no matter what Ryota tries, the seeds simply vanish in his hands. He was hoping that because of his unique skill, something interesting would happen, so he becomes disappointed, making his way back, when a skeleton suddenly appears, catching Ryota by surprise. Ryota wrestles with the skeleton, and he manages to kick it out of the entrance. Ryota thinks it might turn into a stray, but it simply vanishes. Back at the Swallow's gratitude, Urza explains to Ryota that monsters disappear if they leave the dungeon, and that even within the dungeon, they can't enter different levels. Urza blushes as she attempts to compliment Ryota, but he cuts her off and rushes away. He returns to Nihonium and stands in front of the entrance to test a new idea. A skeleton approaches him, and Ryota launches it outside. He quickly shoots it before it disappears, and a mysterious voice tells him that he has acquired a freezing bullet. Ryota tests out the new bullet on a tree, encasing it in ice. At Tellulu, Ryota demonstrates the freezing bullet on a slime, freezing it before Emily kills it. Emily asks him about it, and Ryota tells her what it is, saying it's hard to obtain so he can't use it often. Ryota and Emily are on a trail on the side of a mountain, and they come across two people arguing. A man asks Ryota to retrieve the cargo that had fallen off the cliff, but the woman warns against it, saying it's been left unattended, so strays could spawn. She creates a fireball as she prepares to burn the cargo, but the man stops her, saying the perfume in the cargo is worth a fortune. They start to argue, and the old man tries to hit the woman, but he misses, leaving a dent in the wall. Ryota and Emily are surprised, but the woman explains that a monster called a Femini has just possessed the man. She explains that the monster uses a human body as a nursery to propagate, as Ryota shoots at the monster, freeing the man, but he falls unconscious. The woman tells them to take the man and run, knowing more Femini will appear because of the cargo. She prepares to sacrifice herself, so that they can have enough time to escape, saying it's her responsibility as the escort. Ryota remembers the time when a co-worker made a mistake, and the boss laughed at his misfortune. Although Ryota wanted to help, his co-worker thought it was his responsibility, so he wasn't able to do anything. Ryota wants to help the woman, so he uses his freezing bullets to freeze the monsters, as Emily shatters them with a single blow, and the woman thanks him for saving them. Later that night, they check Emily's stats which seem to have improved drastically after defeating the Femini. She thanks Ryota, saying more good things will happen to her if they stick together, but Ryota thinks he's the one getting all the benefits. They return to the dungeon, where they encounter a rare monster. Ryota takes it out, and it drops a necklace, which he wants Emily to wear. He reveals that it doubles the item drops, so Emily will be able to earn more money with it. While wearing it, Emily takes out a group of bats, and they drop more items than usual. Back in their house, Ryota thinks about moving, saying they can get a nicer place with what they're earning now. He knows it will take some time to save more money, but Emily tells him not to work too hard. At the Swallow's gratitude, Ryota tries to sell bamboo shoots, but Urza thinks it's difficult to appraise. A girl asks Ryota if she can have the shoots, and he lets her have one. She immediately slices it into pieces, and tastes it, saying it tastes good despite being raw, so she wants to buy all of his shoots. Ryota agrees to this, as the girl tells him that she can't put a price on the item, but she wants him to accept some money as a token of her gratitude. He realizes that the girl just paid 20,000 pilos for his bamboo shoots, which is a high price for that item, but he seems to be disappointed. However, Urza reveals that the girl is an epicure named Eryx, and any food she likes will be worth a lot. She wants Ryota to sign an exclusive contract with them, 
thinking his bamboo shoots will become the hot topic in Sekro, so she wants the rights to sell them as a branded product. Urza offers to pay a bonus in addition to the price of the items, and Ryona agrees to this, saying he is happy to partner up with her. He returns to Nihonium, where he sees a skeleton approaching a princess named Margaret. He is about to help her out, but her companions suddenly restrain the monster as she chops its head off. A magic cart stores the head, as her companion tells Ryota that she's using an air box. He tells Ryota that the monsters in Nihonium drop air, so they store it in the box to sell it, and because it's made by Princess Margaret, it has become their top product. He tells Ryota that the magic cart allows them to carry more air boxes, so they can make fewer trips with it. He returns to their house, and he tells Emily that he wants to buy a magic cart, but he knows it will cost a lot, so he can't decide whether to buy a house or a cart first. Emily thinks they should go for the magic cart, thinking it will help them save more money to buy a new house. Ryota thinks she has a good point, so they decide to buy a magic cart first. The next day, they go to the shop, but they see the young girl crying, so they ask her what happened. The girl reveals that her father still hasn't returned, saying he went on a trip to get some flowers. Emily knows that the only place to get flowers is a dungeon called Arsenic, so they decide to check it out. They enter the dungeon, where they see monsters blocking their path. Ryota shoots one of them, but the bullet bounces off, so Emily tells him to stand back, as she charges in with her hammer, instantly killing the monsters. And they proceed deeper into the dungeon, where they see the shopkeeper lying on the ground. Ryota asks him if he's okay, but as it turns out, he's just sleeping on the floor. They try to wake him up, but he won't respond, so Emily slams her hammer on the ground. The shopkeeper wakes up, and Ryota asks him what he's doing there, saying his daughter is worried about him. He reveals that he's getting parts for his new magic cart, and he was able to gather the other materials, but he still needs some light rocks. He points them to a flying rock, telling them that light rocks are lighter than air, so he can't get one. Ryota tells him it's tough to do it alone, but he thinks two people can handle it. He lifts Emily up, as he struggles at the weight of her hammer, despite having an S-rank strength. She swings at the flying rock, taking it out, and it drops a blue rose, which is exactly what the shopkeeper needs. They head outside, where the man leaves it on the ground, waiting for it to turn into a stray. Emily knows it will be impossible to reach once it flies to the sky, so the shopkeeper needs to grab it before it flies off. The rose transforms into a light rock, and it immediately starts ascending, so the shopkeeper goes after it, but he fails to reach it. However, Ryota fires a freezing bullet, causing it to fall to the ground, as the shopkeeper takes it. They return to the shop, where the shopkeeper completes his magic cart, telling them to take it with them. Ryota doesn't want to accept such an expensive gift, but the shopkeeper reminds him that he saved the town from the gorilla, so he deserves some kind of reward. Ryota accepts it, and they use it to store bamboo shoots. It reaches full capacity, so Ryota takes it to Urza, but he sees a man arguing with her. He demands more payment for the goods he's selling, claiming his goods are worth over 10,000 pilos, but Urza tells him that she can't pay more than 8,400. The man tries to attack her, but Ryota freezes his arm, telling him to stop, because Urza won't lie about the price. He removes the goods from his cart, and he takes it to the counter. He puts the man's items into the cart, saying it automatically calculates the amount it sells for, and the cart displays 8,400 pilos. The man accuses him of colluding with Urza, as he breaks the ice on his arm, preparing to strike Ryota, but he easily stops the attack, slapping him away. Urza thanks Ryota for this, saying that as an item trader, she wants people to feel comfortable bringing their goods to her, but she starts to feel like she can't do it alone. Ryota tells her that it's okay to have some help, because she also helped him by buying his items, so he wants to protect her in return. She suddenly kisses him, causing him to blush, as Urza tells him that it was a personal kiss from her, so she wants him to remember it. Ryota and Emily return to Tellulu, where they hunt bats to gather bamboo shoots. Ryota is happy because they can now earn 200,000 pilos in one trip with the magic cart, which is 10 times more than usual. They now have enough money to buy a new house, so they go back home, packing their things, but they start to feel a bit sad, because they have plenty of memorable moments there. They decide to keep their lease on that place, so that they can return to it anytime. The next day, we see them in their new house, as Emily prepares breakfast for them. Ryota wakes up, and he is surprised to see Eve, asking her how she got there. 
Emily thinks this isn't a problem, since she made plenty of food, and they sit together, enjoying their time in their new house. Ryota returns to the first level of Nionium, where he uses his gun to kill mummies, but he realizes that he's out of bullets. He collects a glowing seed from the monster, as a voice notifies him that his speed has increased. A mummy suddenly approaches him from behind, so he wrestles with it, pushing it back and kicking it away. He is surprised to see that his attack cut the mummy in half, and he remembers that he has s rank strength, so he can deal with the monsters even without a weapon. At the Swallow's gratitude, a man named Neptune suddenly sits with him. Ryota wonders what he wants from him, and Neptune reveals that he wants to have an arm wrestling match with Ryota, saying he's interested in his power, because he heard how Ryota slapped a man away. He challenges Ryota to a match, and his confidence gets into Ryota's nerves, so he accepts the challenge. The arm wrestling match begins, and he immediately realizes that Neptune is strong. Ryota struggles against his opponent, but he ends up winning, surprising everyone around them. Ryota remembers that Urza told him about Neptune, informing him that Neptune is the leader of the most powerful organization in Sekro, and Neptune asks for a rematch, but he refuses, saying they've already made a scene. Neptune suddenly stands up, trying to punch Ryota, so he immediately counters, blowing Neptune away. He quickly gets back up, saying he likes Ryota, so he wants him to join his family, but Ryota turns him down. Back at their house, Ryota tells Emily that he has no interest in joining groups, because he is already enjoying the life he has with her. Emily is amazed that Neptune scouted him, thinking it must be because he has helped many people, and she calls Ryota a hero. He returns to Nihonium, where he encounters Margaret's companion, who informs him about their company's latest product known as the Pandora's Box, which automatically stores the dropped items and displays the face of the person who found it. The man gives Ryota some of the boxes, telling him to inform his friends about it, and he initially refuses to accept it, but he thinks about a good way to use it. Outside the dungeon, we learn that Ryota used the box to store the seeds. He leaves it on the ground, causing stray skeletons to appear, and he immediately takes them out, allowing him to gather freezing bullets with ease. Emily is about to enter the dungeon with their magic cart, when she stumbles upon Ryota, who is repeating the process with the items he received from other monsters. A mummy and a zombie appear, and he quickly disposes of them, causing two special bullets to appear. Ryota takes the red bullet, as the voice notifies him that he has acquired a fire bullet, then he takes the white one, and he immediately realizes that it's useful, so he thinks about getting more. By repeating the process, he has acquired plenty of special bullets, but as he is about to open the last box, he suddenly feels a powerful chill. Emily tells him that there is a magic storm, and he returns to Urza, who informs him that the magic storm is a rare natural phenomenon, where no one will be able to use magic. Urza reveals that its effects could reach the dungeons, so adventurers who use magic should take the day off. At that moment, a man named Reyes enters the building, asking for help, because his partner, Rosa, has been left behind in Silicon, which is a dungeon intended for magic users. Reyes goes around asking for help, but none of the adventurers want to help him, so he falls to his knees, as Ryota wonders why no one wants to help him. Neptune suddenly appears, telling Ryota that the monsters in Silicon are so dangerous that he doesn't want to go near it. Urza reveals that the monsters in the dungeon are immune to non-magical attacks, so Neptune thinks there's nothing he can do for them. However, Ryota approaches Reyes, telling him that he will search for Rosa, who is revealed to be at the third level of Silicon. He runs through the dungeon, using his special bullets to defeat the monsters, while Emily returns to Urza's shop, where she sees Ryota's cart. A girl named Ina informs Emily about the situation, as Eve overhears their conversation. Meanwhile, Ryota reaches the third level of Silicon, and he finds Rosa lying on the ground, when a monster suddenly appears, but he realizes that he has run out of special bullets. We see Emily and Eve making their way to Ryota, as Emily states that they have no choice, saying Ryota reminds her of her mother. In a flashback, we see a young Emily with her mother, who defeats a monster to save the other adventurers. She checks up on the adventurers, as she tells them to be more careful when exploring dungeons. She takes out the wine that the monster dropped, and she starts hanging out with them, enjoying their time together. One day, an adventurer tells her to run because there is a stray dragon, but she chooses to fight it instead. She defeats the dragon, but she falls to the ground. Emily is worried about her, 
but she tells Emily not to make a fuss, asking her if the others are safe. Emily tells her that they're okay, and this makes her mother smile, as she tells Emily to bring her to them, because she doesn't want her items to turn into strays. As Emily carries her back, she warns Emily not to be reckless when venturing into the dungeon, and she passes away. Back in the present, Emily thinks that Ryota is a hero just like her mother, because he goes out of his way to help others, so she thinks that it's her turn to help him. Ryota flees from the monsters, trying to shoot them with his regular bullets, but it proves to be ineffective. He continues to run away, and he encounters Emily and Eve, who are running away from zombies. They offer to take care of Rosa, while Ryota deals with the strays, showing him an empty box. Emily and Eve distract the monsters, as Ryota shoots the stray zombies, causing them to drop fire bullets. Ryota says he'll take care of it, and after a while, Reyes sees them walking out of the dungeon with Rosa. He is worried because Rosa is in bad shape, but Ryota tells him not to worry, as he uses a bullet to heal her. Ryota reveals that the white bullet is actually a healing bullet, and Rosa's condition instantly improves, so Reyes thanks Ryota for helping them out. Ryota is happy that they were able to save her, and Emily sees an image of her mother as he smiles. He is impressed that Emily came up with the idea to bring stray zombies to him, but Emily tells him it isn't a big deal, saying she just imitated what she saw him do. He thanks Emily and Eve for saving him, and he offers to treat them to some food, but Emily declines, saying they should just go home, because she wants to be the one to cook for him. Ryota gets a new drop of watermelons, and he asks Urza to appraise it for him, but Eric suddenly appears, saying she can help him appraise it on the spot. She takes a bite, and she is instantly brought to tears by how refreshing and sweet it tastes. The other people crowd around to try it as well, and Urza quickly offers to have an exclusive contract with Ryota. Ryota is surprised by how popular it is, and he is happy to have another reliable source of income. Urza knows that watermelons are dropped on level 5 of Tellulu, and she asks Ryota if he has gotten his license, revealing that it's required when going to level 6 and beyond. It applies to every dungeon, and she explains that there's a new license for every 5 levels. She says that if he doesn't get a license, traders won't be able to buy his items from the lower levels. Ryota heads over to another building, where he asks about getting the license. The man asks about his achievements, and Ryota mentions he regularly farms on level 5 of Tellulu for watermelons. The man is not very impressed, but he shows Ryota a melon from the 6th floor. He plans to turn it into a stray, and says that if Ryota can defeat it, he will get his license, but the man warns him that monsters from level 6 are on a whole different level. They wait for the melon to transform, and it ends up turning into a metal slime. Emily notes that its body is immune to blade attacks, but Ryota decides to see if it can withstand his S-rank strength. He manages to knock it back, but it's not very effective. He tries his gun next, setting the slime on fire, and then following it up with a freezing bullet. He shatters the slime, explaining that he caused an extreme temperature difference to make the metal brittle, and Emily is amazed. The man is also impressed, and Ryota gets his license. The man notes that in his 10 years as an examiner, he has never been so impressed. Ryota starts thinking about how to get even more drops, and he suddenly asks for Emily's help. A few days later, we see that they bought a giant tuna for one and a half million pilos. They leave it out, waiting for it to turn into a stray, and it turns into a giant gorilla. Emily is traumatized seeing another gorilla, but Ryota starts shooting it with his freezing bullets. He climbs onto it, easily taking it out, and Emily is amazed he defeated it so quickly. The gorilla drops another gun, and Ryota gets excited to dual wield them, thinking it will make his combos easier, but Emily worries about what would happen if he turned into a bad guy. Back at the Swallow's Gratitude, Ryota notices Urza seems distracted. She mentions there's a strike. She says Rice only comes from level 6 of the Silicon Dungeon, but the Albert group that occupies that level has demanded higher prices, or else they are refusing to sell any. Ryota decides to go check it out, but he runs into Neptune along the way. It turns out he's there for the same reason, mentioning that this isn't the first time the Adalbert group has done this, so he is planning to destroy them, but Ryota asks for a chance to resolve the situation. He goes down to level 6, and some of the guys from the Adalbert group tell him to go away. He draws his guns, so the men call for backup, preparing to fight him, but Ryota shoots two bullets that combine, 
and all the men are suddenly put to sleep. Neptune suddenly pops up, wondering what he did, and Ryota explains that if he fuses two of his healing bullets, it turns into a sleeping bullet. We see Ryota practicing with his two guns, trying out the different combinations of combining his bullets, and he discovers countless different effects. Neptune is impressed by him, and they end up carrying all the men out of the dungeon. Ryota gets noticed by another man, and he meets with the Sacro Dungeon Chief named Clint. Ryota wonders what he wants, and the chief asks for his help in a battle for a new dungeon against the neighboring city of Hetro. He mentions that the dungeons in Hetro all drop meat, but a new dungeon appeared halfway between the two cities, and it drops both meat and vegetables, so he wants to claim it. Ryota wonders why it even matters which city owns the dungeon, and Clint explains that every time a drop is bought, the city charges a tax, so he says it's extremely important for their town's economic health. Clint apologizes for losing his cool, and he eats a handful of sugar to calm himself down. He mentions that a dungeon's ownership is usually determined by the percentage of meat versus vegetables, but since it's split 50-50, ownership will be determined by who can get more rare drops. He has heard about Ryota's insane drop rates, which is why he wants his help, saying he will be paid even if they lose, but if they win, he will be given a tax exemption. Ryota explains the situation to Emily, and she is impressed he was asked to check out a new dungeon. Ryota tells her to go with her, but she thinks she won't be very useful, but Ryota insists that she come along. Ryota and Emily head off for the new dungeon, and Ryota finds it weird that the wilderness is so barren. Emily says it's because everything ends up turning into a stray, and she notes that it can be strenuous traveling between cities, so she draws a bean sprout on the ground, saying they are the source of energy, so she hopes to encourage anyone that's struggling, and Ryota joins in, drawing his own bean sprout as well. At night, Emily sets up camp, and Ryota is shocked she was carrying such a huge tent. She tells him to get some water, and there is suddenly a bunch of hammering going on inside the tent. When Ryota returns with the water, he thinks roughing it out in the wilderness is quite different, but when he gets inside the tent, he finds it completely furnished, and Emily has prepared an amazing dinner. Ryota wonders how she carried everything, but she just says she fit it all in her backpack, although she notes that it was a bit heavy. Emily even makes dessert, saying it's their first trip together, so she gave it extra effort, and Ryota thinks he's so lucky to have her. Emily prepares to burn their trash, saying they don't want it to turn into strays. Ryota is surprised that even trash turns into strays, and Emily says that the strays that come from trash are particularly strong, and they are different monsters than what they were originally. But Ryota gets interested hearing this, and he puts the trash out, waiting for it to turn into a stray. It turns into a Frankenstein, and Ryota sets it on fire. Emily notes that it's not enough, so Ryota combines two fire bullets together, creating a huge inferno, and Ryota checks out the drop. The next day, they leave a carrot out, which turns into a slime. Ryota has a new green bullet. The slime dodges his shot, but it turns out to be a homing bullet. Ryota is excited about this addition, but Emily worries he is becoming even more dangerous. They arrive at the new dungeon cellin, and there are a ton of people set up around it. Ryota thinks it must be because both cities have sent people there. They see a huge pile of trash, and Ryota wonders how it can be safe. They see a girl using inferno magic to burn the trash, and Emily is impressed by her power. But another trash pile quickly forms, and Ryota can see the girl is exhausted. He recognizes her look as the same as how he used to feel, back when he was completely overworked in his past. They go over to the girl, telling her she should rest, but she says she needs to continue before any strays appear. She tries to cast her spell again, but she can't keep going, and she ends up collapsing. Ryota tells her she needs to take a break, but she gets back up, saying she needs to continue. He says that her health is deteriorating, and this could lead to her death, but she still wants to finish her job, so he shoots her with the sleeping bullet, forcing her to rest. She wakes up in a tent, and she realizes that it's already late, so she rushes back to the trash pile, where strays are starting to appear. Ryota takes them out, combining his fire bullets to burn them away. As he collects their drops, Emily tells the people to line up for the trash collection, and she notices the girl, telling her to get more sleep. Ryota thinks she must be hungry, so he treats her to some food, as he reveals that they moved their tent closer to the collection site. 
The girl introduces herself as Celis, and she tells them that there is a lot of trash in the area, because the drops in Selen are tax-exempt until its ownership has been decided. Ryota tells her that they will help her out, and she thanks them, telling them that this is the only work she can do, before falling asleep. The next day, Celis burns the entire trash pile at once, as Ryota notes that her spells are more powerful than it was yesterday. She explains that her magic recovered after they gave her a chance to rest, and Emily tells her not to overwork herself, offering to let her stay in the tent until the event is over. She is reluctant at first, but she ends up accepting the offer, so they tell her to head to the tent, as Emily walks with Ryota on his way to the Sacro headquarters. Along the way, they encounter a merchant who is selling jewelry, and they realize that the most expensive ring costs 1 million pilos. Emily wants the ring, saying it looks lovely, but they don't have enough money to buy it. Ryota arrives at the Sekro headquarters, where the man in charge introduces himself as Duke. He shows Ryota a sketch of Selen, revealing that there are 10 levels, and the odd-numbered floors drop vegetables, while the even-numbered floors drop meat. Duke explains that they had an agreement with Heatro, where the side with more rare drops on their floors will own the dungeon. Sekro must obtain the rare drops on the odd-numbered floors to win, and Ryota immediately agrees to help them. Duke explains that the adventurers who find rare monsters will capture them, so that he can finish them off, saying it's the most efficient way to acquire rare drops. In the dungeon, we see an adventurer grabbing onto a rare monster, and Duke tells Ryota to finish it off. However, they see a group of adventurers from Heatro watching them. One of them is named Eugene, who is said to be especially skilled, but his plant drop rate is at rank F. We learn that Heatro is sending adventurers with low drop rates to defeat the rare monsters, so that they won't drop anything. Ryota shoots the monster, blowing a hole through it, but it somehow survives, and it starts growing in size. The Heatro adventurers know that they can't kill it unless they destroy the core. Eugene pursues the monster, ready to strike the core, but Ryota fires a homing bullet, shattering it in the nick of time. Duke tells him that they have obtained the rare drop, as the Heatro adventurers walk away frustrated. They leave the dungeon, and Duke gives him plenty of money as a reward, telling him that he can also have the rare drop. Ryota wasn't expecting to earn this much, so he thinks about doing it again. That evening, he returns to their tent, showing Emily the ring that she wanted. He wants her to have it, making her surprise, but Emily doesn't want to accept it, because it's too expensive. Ryota reveals that it is easier to earn money in that area, telling her that she is special to him, so he wants to give it to her. Emily ends up accepting it, and she becomes overjoyed, thanking Ryota for the ring. The next day, they check Emily's drop rates, and they realize that there is a plus one next to each of them. Ryota reveals that he left the ring on the ground, so that it would turn into a stray. When the stray appeared, he immediately killed it, and it dropped the same ring, but with an effect attached to it. They head to the dungeon, where Emily defeats a monster, causing it to drop a chicken breast. This makes her happy, because it's the first time she has ever gotten a meat drop, because her animal drop rate was always at rank F. At that moment, they see a group of adventurers fighting a rare monster, and it attacks Emily, knocking her back, but she quickly gets back up. We learn that the adventurers are from Heatro, and a man with a high drop rate arrives, ready to kill the monster. However, Emily charges in, giving Ryota the ring, and he immediately knows what she has in mind, so he uses freezing bullets to immobilize the monster, as Emily lands the finishing blow. The monster doesn't drop anything, so the adventurers from Heatro run away, as Ryota compliments her, giving the ring back. At the headquarters, Duke tells Ryota that more adventurers from Heatro will be arriving, and they will be gathering on the odd-numbered floors to prevent them from getting rare drops. Ryota suggests clearing the levels before they arrive, saying they should raise the reward for finding rare monsters. Duke doesn't like the idea, but Ryota assures him that he will get the rare drops, so Duke reluctantly agrees to this, and they rush through the dungeon, defeating the rare monsters to get their drops. At level 9, they encounter a Hydra, but Ryota shoots his homing bullets, hitting all of its heads at once, and he's able to kill the Hydra. It drops mushrooms, as Ryota comments that its drop is as lame as the other rare monsters. Duke celebrates, thinking they have already won, so he leaves to report his achievements to the headquarters. As Ryota is about to leave, he becomes surrounded by a group of adventurers from Heatro, which is led by Eugene. 
Eugene tells him that they failed their quest because of him, and one of the adventurers seals his magic, hoping to stop him from using his guns. They all charge at him at once, but he easily beats them up, saying he is stronger without his gun. He pulls out his weapon, and fires at Eugene's direction, revealing he can use them even if his magic is sealed. Ryota heals the injured adventurers, and he tells them that he knows how they feel, so they can continue attacking him if they want to, but he can't lose, because he has someone waiting for him when he returns home. Eugene is jealous because he doesn't have someone special in his life, but Ryota tells him that he might find someone in the future. Back in the tent, Emily prepares plenty of food for them, and Celis tells Ryota that he has done well, but he reveals that Selen still doesn't belong to Sekro, so the dispute is far from over. The following day, Celis uses her inferno spell to burn some trash, but she suddenly passes out. Ryota catches her, using a healing bullet to help her recover, and he asks her why she used such a powerful spell to burn a small trash pile, and Celis reveals that she can only use the level 3 inferno spell. More trash is delivered to them, and Celis is about to burn it, but Ryota beats her to it, telling her that he's there to help. But despite their combined efforts, a massive pile of trash has accumulated, as Ryota wonders if it's always this bad. Celis informs him that the dungeon master has just appeared, and no one's allowed to enter Selen because of it, so everyone is now stress eating, which explains why there is a lot of trash. Celis is exhausted, so Ryota tells her to take a break, saying he will take care of it. Emily takes her to the camp, and Ryota does his best, but the next day, the massive trash pile is still there. Ryota says he will go to the headquarters to see how things are going, thinking it would make Celis feel better. At the Sacro headquarters, he sees Neptune with his companions, and Duke informs him that the Neptune group is going to defeat the Dungeon Master. Ryota implores Neptune to do it right away, but Duke reveals that they need to assemble a joint force with Heatro to deal with the Dungeon Master as per agreement. However, Heatro isn't sending anyone, knowing the drops in the dungeon can change because of the Dungeon Master, so it actually gives them the advantage, considering that Sekro is about to win. Ryota volunteers to deal with the Dungeon Master, but Duke says he won't allow it, because there is a rule that only three high-ranking adventurers can enter the dungeon. Ryota asks for Neptune's help but he declines, explaining that he's on a contract with Sekro, so he can't act on his own. Ryota tries to ask for help from the other adventurers, but nobody wants to help him, because they're only there to profit from the drops while they're tax-exempt. He returns to the tent, where he sees Emily ready for battle, saying she is going to join him in the fight against the Dungeon Master. Celis also wants to join, saying someone is willing to help with the trash while she's gone. Eugene runs to them, and Celis tells them that he agreed to burn the trash. Ryota wonders if he'll be able to do it on his own, but he reveals that he's not alone, as we see a group of adventurers working with him. Ryota tells them about the rule that only three high-ranking adventurers can enter the dungeon, so Celis shows him her stats, and we learn that two of her stats are at rank A, but her drop rates are terrible. They enter Selen, and they notice that there are no monsters, because the monsters leave when the dungeon master is around, which explains why the drops in the dungeon have been affected. The ceiling breaks, as the dungeon master appears before them, in the form of a dark horse, which Celis recognizes as a bicorn. Emily takes a swing, but the bicorn's barrier repels her, pushing her away, and Ryota tries to shoot it, but the barrier protects it. The bicorn charges at them, but Celis uses her inferno spell, forcing the creature to stop, as Ryota shoots it, destroying its barrier. Emily manages to land a hit, but its barrier returns, and Ryota thinks about using the same chain of attacks. Meanwhile at the headquarters, Duke learns that Ryota entered the dungeon. Neptune isn't surprised about this, but Duke thinks that he's in danger, because the bicorn's power is a huge threat. Their fight with the bicorn continues, as Ryota comments on how resilient it is, because it's still standing after all the damage that they've inflicted. A sigil suddenly appears around the bicorn, and Ryota thinks they need to stop it, so Emily charges in, but the sigil causes her to lose strength. It reaches Ryota and Celis, and it decreases most of their stats by two ranks. Despite this, Emily swings at the bicorn, shattering its barrier, but she gets blown away. She quickly recovers, and they check up on Celis, they realize that she is now struggling, because her energy has been depleted after her stats were lowered, so Ryota says he will deal with the bicorn on his own. 
She thinks that she is being a burden to the party, but Ryota tells her that she has been a great help to them, so she should just rest for a while. Celis has never heard such kind words before, as she recalls that everyone has been harsh to her, pressuring her to finish her job, even though she is struggling to complete it. But Ryota is nothing like them, and his kindness makes her happy, so as Ryota struggles against the bicorn, she gets back up, going beyond her limit to cast another inferno spell, which destroys the creature's barrier. Emily lends Ryota her hammer, and he lunges at the creature, smashing its horns, and he manages to defeat it. They check up on Celis, telling her that they couldn't have done it without her. She is happy that she was able to help them out, and Ryota gives her the bicorn's drop, but she refuses to accept it, saying it's too valuable. But Ryota and Emily insist on giving it to her, so she ends up accepting it, and we learn that the item allows her to use level 1 magic without limitations. At the headquarters, Duke is surprised to learn that they have defeated the dungeon master, and he rushes outside, wanting to inform everyone about it. Neptune's companions approach Ryota, complimenting him on his achievement. Ryota asks them where Neptune is, but they fall silent, and we see Neptune threatening the leader of the Heatro adventurers, saying he wasn't able to join Ryota because of his actions. Back at their camp, Celis uses the item she received, allowing her to use level 1 fire magic to burn away the trash. We learn that Selen now belongs to Sekro, and that the dispute is finally over. Ryota tells her that they will return to Sekro tomorrow, and he asks her to go with them, saying he wants her to be a part of his party. Celis happily accepts this, and Emily welcomes her as a part of their family, looking forward to their next adventure. Meanwhile, we see Eve eating carrots, but she doesn't like how they taste, and she wishes Ryota could get back soon, so she can eat his carrots again. Ryota and his party get back to Sekro, but everyone stares at Celis, captivated by her beauty. They stumble upon Urza, who is surprised to see Celis, wondering who she is. Ryota explains that Celis is his new party member, and Urza tells him to drop by her shop when he has time, because she wants to ask a favor from him regarding the Harvest Festival. But she dashes off, and the three are left wondering what the festival is about. Celis and Emily gather information about it, and after some time, we learn that the goods gathered in the dungeon are put on display during the event so that they can turn into strays in an arena where the adventurers would then fight them. Celis wonders what they're doing in that area, so Ryota shows her a box as he explains that he gathered seeds at Nihonium while they were gathering information, allowing him to max out his speed. He reveals that the box contains some of the seeds he gathered, as strays suddenly appear. Ryota charges at them, and Celis appears to be worried, but Emily assures her that everything is going to be fine. The strays drop a new type of bullet, and Ryota wonders what it does. There are suddenly explosions around the town, as a stray makes its appearance. Emily charges at it, while Celis uses her inferno spell, creating a pillar of fire, but the stray manages to survive, and it attacks Emily. Ryota pushes it away, and throws it upwards, shooting it with his new bullets, and they bind the monster's movements. As the monster falls, Ryota uses an erasing bullet to finish it off, and it drops a pouch, which automatically gathers the dropped items. Emily's hammer is broken, and she tries to fix it, but she ends up snapping the handle. The next day, they go to the weapons dealer Smith, who offers to make a new hammer for Emily if she helps him advertise his business. Emily accepts his offer, so he starts making the weapon, Ryota returns to Nihonium, where he encounters Margaret's group. Her companion tells him that their airbox business isn't doing well, so Ryota suggests selling their ring drops instead. The monsters start to overwhelm her, so Ryota shoots them, and Margaret thanks him for saving her, giving him a ring as a reward. Meanwhile, Emily tries out the handle, as he suddenly enters, inquiring about Ryota's whereabouts, and Emily tells her he's in the dungeon. Eve tries looking for him, but we see Ryota is now at the Swallow's Gratitude, wondering what Urza wants from him. She wants him to collect rare drops, offering to pay him for it, and he agrees to this, so she gives him a list of the rare drops that she wants him to collect. He learns that money is being dropped in a dungeon, so he gets some and leaves it outside, waiting for it to turn into a stray. It transforms into a bird, which starts flying away, evading his bullets as it tries to escape but Ryota uses his homing bullets, allowing him to take it out, and it drops a potion that can temporarily boost a person's plant drop rate by three ranks. At that moment, Eve clings to him, asking for his carrots. 
Ryota fulfills her wish, and he tells her to get some carrots for her party members. But she tells him that she left her party, because the other adventurers don't share her obsession with carrots. In a flashback, we see a young Eve with her party, eating meat, and she tells her companions that she hates vegetables. But they tell her she needs to eat them to be healthy, so she dashes away, and starts venturing on her own. She kills a monster, but it drops a boy, and he asks her if she's a ghost. Another monster suddenly appears, but Eve takes it out, and the boy asks her to teach him how to fight. Eve agrees to this, so she damages a monster and instructs him to throw a bomb, allowing him to get his first kill. The monster drops a carrot, but Eve tells him to throw it away, because she doesn't like it. However, he forces her to eat it, and she is surprised by how good it tastes, so she ends up finishing the entire carrot, telling the boy that they should form a party. The boy agrees to this, but he suddenly disappears. Back in the present, Eve reveals that the boy made her fall in love with carrots. Ryota tells her to get her own carrots, but she reveals that her plant drop rate is D, so she can only get ordinary carrots. He gives her the potion, and she drinks it, raising her plant drop rate to rank A. Eve defeats a slime, and she obtains a delicious carrot, which she instantly eats. Eve is happy that she was able to get the carrot on her own, so she inquires about the potion, but Ryota tells her that it's a special item which only he can obtain. She implores him to let her join his party, and Ryota reluctantly accepts her. He returns to their home, where Emily shows him her new hammer, but she sees Eve clinging to him, so she wonders what's going on. Ryota tells them that she is going to join their party, so Emily welcomes her aboard. The next day, Ryota notices that Celis is not feeling well. Celis reveals that it's because of the magic storm, saying it makes her feel sick, but she will feel better after it passes. Ryota decides to look for a bigger house, which won't be affected by magic storms. They check out another house, and Celis immediately feels better, as the landlord tells them that the house was built to block the effects of magic storms. Emily inquires about the cost of the rent, so the landlord reveals that it's 400,000 pilos per month. Emily and Celis think it's too expensive, but Ryota decides to take it, because he wants to have a house that can make his family smile. Ryota notes that it's almost time for the harvest festival, so they need to gather the rare drops on Urza's list, and look for the rare monsters from Tellulu. On the seventh level of Tellulu, Ryota encounters the captain with the rookie adventurers. The captain starts crying, telling them that he is proud of them, because they have become stronger. The rookies are glad that they followed him, but Ryota thinks that they have been brainwashed. They encounter a pink slime, and Ryota tries to shoot it, but it survives, and becomes immune to his attacks. Celis tells him to stop, telling him that he can't defeat the slime alone, because it becomes invincible when it's close to dying, and it no longer takes damage from the last person who attacked it. She uses a fire spell to defeat it, and she tells Ryota to let them fight, and just focus on landing the finishing blow. Another slime appears, so Emily attacks it, while Ryota finishes it off, causing it to drop a mountain of onions. Ryota notices that it's easy to deal with the slimes if they use teamwork, and they start talking about what they should eat for dinner, when suddenly, Ryota gets hit, knocking him back. He notices that the monster isn't an ordinary slime, so he concludes that it's a rare monster. Celis reveals that it has the ability to reflect damage when it's close to dying, so they need to wear it down carefully. Eve tells them to leave it to her, because she has fought one before. She attacks the monster, and Ryota shoots it, allowing them to defeat it. It drops a jewel, and Celis explains that it reflects damage when it's equipped. He decides to sell it to Urza, who immediately recognizes it as a rare drop called the Slime Tear, and she pays him 3 million pilos for the item. Ryota goes to Nihonium, where he defeats a red skeleton, which drops a new seed, that boosts his energy. He knows that the energy is used for casting magic, so he starts to wonder how he can learn magic. Ryota buys an item that is worth 3 million pilos, as Celis reveals that people often learn magic by leveling up, but she knows that he's stuck at level 1. The magic fruit allows him to learn a random magic spell when it's consumed, so Celis tells him to eat it, but Ryota leaves it on the ground, waiting for it to turn into a stray. It eventually turns into a metal ball, and he approaches it, as it slowly takes his form. Ryota struggles against it, because it possesses 80% of his stats. He throws the creature, and he shoots it, blowing a hole into it. It drops a magic fruit, as Celis comments that it's just the same item, but Ryota tells her that it's different, 
and he starts eating it. After some time, Ryota tells Emily that he can now use two spells. He demonstrates the first spell known as the Wind Cutter, and Emily wants to know about the second one. Ryota tells her that it's weird, saying he will have to test it on a slime. Celis burns the baby slimes, causing the bigger one to get angry, and Ryota uses his reservation spell. The slime is about to attack Emily, but he shoots it with his binding bullet, as she lands the finishing blow. The slime drops plenty of potatoes, and Ryota reveals that the spell applies his drop rates to whoever defeats the monster. He thinks that it's useless, but Emily disagrees, saying she was able to level up after defeating the monster, so he decides to use it to help them gain experience. Ryota returns to Urza's shop, where he sees a girl named Alice, asking the captain if she can join his party. Urza tells Ryota that her max level is 2, so the other adventurers don't want her in their party. The captain is about to let her join, but Ryota stops him, saying he wants Alice to join his party, because he knows that the captain won't treat her well. Urza tells Alice that Ryota's party is the best in town, so the captain walks away, and Ryota welcomes her to his party. They check out her stats, and Ryota notes that it's terrible, but he tells her to start leveling up anyways. They enter Nihonium, where Alice tells him that she was born in a dungeon. She points him to the location of the monsters, and they see a group of skeletons in the area. Ryota is impressed that she can pinpoint the location of monsters, and he uses his binding bullet, telling her to finish them off while they're restrained. She is able to level up, so they leave the dungeon to check her stats, but it still looks bad, and Ryota knows that this is her max level. Alice tells him that a creature named Bonesy wants her to return to the dungeon, so they go back inside, and she points him to a skeleton, saying it wants her to defeat it. She is able to defeat it, causing it to shrink, and she tells Ryota that Bonzi will be fighting with them. They go to Tellulu, where she tells Ryota that a monster named Jiggly is calling her. Bonzi transforms into a human-sized skeleton, and it fights against Jiggly, managing to secure the victory. After it's defeated, Jiggly transforms into a tiny slime, and it also becomes her pet. They return to the house, where Ryota introduces Alice to everyone, and they all welcome her to the family. It's time for the Harvest Festival, and we see Ryota and Emily checking out the stalls. He buys a bell for her, and she attaches it to her new hammer, so that she can bring it with her anywhere she goes. Alice takes them to a weird stall that is selling boxes, and the shopkeeper tells them about a monster which gives plenty of experience when it's defeated. He reveals that the boxes will spawn that monster, so they can use it to help them level up. Ryota decides to try it out, and they leave it on the ground, where it transforms into a mouse. He uses his binding bullet to restrict its movements, then casts the reservation spell. Emily crushes it to death, and it drops a strengthening bullet. Ryota decides to try it out, causing a sigil to appear, but nothing happens, so he starts to think that the bullet is broken. But when he fires a regular bullet, it's far stronger than normal, so he concludes that the strengthening bullet enhances the power of his next shot. They return to the town, where the people are in a state of panic, because a stray has appeared, and it's about to attack a girl. The party tries to take it down, but with every attack, the stray grows in size. Ryota concludes that the monster is absorbing their attacks, and at that moment, Neptune joins them, knowing they need some help. His companions cast a spell, giving him a pair of wings, which he uses to fly in the air. Ryota binds the creature, as he launches a powerful energy beam, that defeats the monster in a single hit. The girl approaches Ryota, and she thanks him for saving the town, saying she wants to be an adventurer when she grows up, and Ryota encourages her to work hard. Even Celis returned from the dungeon, and Ryota introduces his party to Neptune. Neptune tries to convince him to join his group instead, but Ryota rejects the offer. As they continue to enjoy the festival, Alice points them to a certain location, where she can sense monsters. Celis thinks it must be the arena, where fighters pair up to take on strays, and compete for a prize. Ryota thinks they should join, and he decides to pick Celis as his partner, because she knows a lot about the monsters. In the arena, the crowd cheers for them as they fight against a slime. Celis uses her Inferno spell, and Ryota finishes it off. He compliments her for her performance, telling her that she's an important party member, and this makes her happy. That evening, Celis shows them the rare item they got at the arena, which is revealed to be a fireworks set. They start playing with it, as everyone enjoys the moment, 
But after consuming the item, Alice suddenly spaces out, and she starts walking away, saying someone is calling out to her. Ryota stops her, causing her to regain consciousness, and he asks her where the voice is coming from. Alice points him to Nionium, and he tells her that they will investigate it tomorrow, because it's already getting late. The next day, Ryota meets up with Clint, who informs him that the monsters haven't been dropping anything in the dungeons. He reveals that this has never happened before, and he is starting to become worried, because he doesn't know how long it will last. Clint asks Ryota to investigate it, so he returns to Tellulu with his party, where they see a pair of adventurers complaining about the situation. Eve orders Ryota to kill a slime, because she wants to eat a carrot. Ryota thinks that it won't drop anything, but he shoots it anyways, and to his surprise, it actually drops a carrot, so they start to wonder why nothing is dropping for the other adventurers. Ryota recalls that someone from Nihonium was calling out to Alice, and Nihonium is a dungeon where the monsters don't drop anything for other adventurers. So he comes up with a theory, and he quickly dashes off, making his way to Nihonium. On the fourth level, he encounters a mysterious girl, thinking she must be the reason why the monsters aren't dropping anything. He concludes that she is the dungeon master, so he shoots her, but the bullet passes right through her, and she kicks him away. Ryota realizes his attacks don't work on her, so he wonders how he's going to be able to defeat her. He tries using his special bullets, but they also just go right through her. Nothing seems to work, and he gets kicked away again. Even his fusion bullets have no effect, and he thinks he has no chance of winning, but he suddenly notices that one of his shots managed to hit her. As the boss digs out the bullet, Ryota realizes that his homing bullets are effective. He instantly loads his gun with homing bullets, but when he shoots them, they still go through the boss's body. However, when she tries to attack, she is hit by the homing bullets. Ryota continues to fire, and as the boss tries to attack again, her hand is destroyed by the bullets. Ryota explains that the moment she tries to attack, her body becomes physical, and the homing bullets will instantly lock onto her. Ryota runs out of homing bullets, but he has done enough damage to weaken her so he can now follow her movements. He attacks with a headbutt, knocking them both back, but he gets back up, and he finishes her off. He ends up passing out, and when he wakes up, he finds Emily calling out to him. She reveals that the drops are back, telling him he has saved everyone, but she wishes he wouldn't push himself so hard, not wanting to see him get hurt. As they are about to head back to the house, Ryota notices a ring that the dungeon master dropped. They get out of the dungeon, and Emily wants to tell everyone that Ryota saved the day, but he prefers not to have that kind of attention. The rest of his party arrive, telling him that he's too reckless, and Ryota agrees not to do things alone next time. The next day, Ryota goes back to Nihonium, and he tries testing out the ring that he got. A group of skeletons approach him, which he easily takes out, and the ring seems to have the ability to create crystals. He runs into Margaret's group, and they mention his idea to sell rings won't work, because they only drop from dragons, and Margaret isn't strong enough to beat them alone. They check out Margaret's stats, and we see she is level 94, but her stats are all at F. Ryota feels bad for her, so he gives her one of his crystals. It allows her to level up, and we learn that his ring has the power to transform the monsters that he kills into XP crystals. Margaret is suddenly shocked, when she sees that her stats have also ranked up. Ryota decides to try again, giving her a bunch more of his crystals, and she levels up to 96, with all her stats ranking up again. Ryota thinks Margaret must just be a late bloomer, and her hard work is finally paying off. Margaret is overjoyed, and she wants to repay Ryota, but he just quickly runs off instead. He buys all the carrots and bean sprouts from the town, and he plans to level up his party. He explains how his ring works to them, but Eve refuses to let him destroy the carrots. Ryota promises to get her better carrots, so she agrees to wait patiently. The mountain of carrots and bean sprouts eventually turn into strays, and Ryota takes out the monsters with his guns, while the girls take turns picking up the crystals. At the end of the day, they check their stats, and we see they are all at max level. Celis becomes overjoyed when she sees she finally has a drop stat that isn't an F, and she thanks Ryota for everything, Emily thinks it's a bit sad that Ryota can't get any experience himself when he works so hard, but Ryota says that the experiences he has had in this world are more valuable to him. He thinks that now they have all reached max level, 
it's time for their family to move to the next stage. The next day, we see the group walking through the town, and we see they have started to become quite famous. They go to get dungeon licenses for Emily and Celis, and we see them easily passing the tests. Alice wonders what they should do next, and Ryota suggests splitting up, to find how they can each make the most of their talents. We see the group out hunting in the various dungeons, and after a week, they report back to see how much each of them was able to earn. Emily reveals she was able to make 160,000 pilos a day, while Salas and Alice each managed to earn around 100,000. Eve reveals she made around 120,000, but notes that she ended up eating all her carrots, and Ryota can't believe she could eat so much. Ryota goes on to reveal that he made around 2 million a day, and Emily wonders what he plans on buying with all their money. Ryota ends up buying the latest magic card for everyone, and we see it has a special function that can transfer their items directly to their house, so they will never run out of space when hunting. Ryota meets up with Urza, and he notes that it's a pain for him to constantly need to make multiple trips to bring in all his items, so he makes a deal with her so that she can handle managing all of the items. Emily welcomes her to the family, and they decide to have a welcome party for her, but Ryota wonders why Neptune has also turned up. Margaret also arrives to thank him once again, and Emily invites them all in, saying the more the merrier. The card merchant also turns up, and Clint comes to thank him for defeating the dungeon master. Ryota can't believe there are suddenly so many people, but he thinks about everything he's been through with them, and how lucky he is that he came to this world. But that's where this video ends. Remember to like, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.